I heard some parts of it and it is very clear to me that the world, there is really no distinction anymore between science and faith. And I think this is really what should bring us together. We are in a very, very difficult time in the world. We, there is no doubt that we, have, we are facing a kind of disruption that we never thought was even possible. And this dis disruption that we are faced with today has the worst impact on the very poor in our world. And I think that face of the devastation is something that we must always keep in mind. I mean, for me and for most of us in India, the images of workers going back, leaving our cities, walking for miles to go back to their villages was heartbreaking. And it showed us clearly that the the scale of the disruption and what that has done to the livelihoods of the very poor. But it's also coming at a time when we are seeing cyclone after cyclone batter this country. We've had two cyclones in this last 15 days. Another one that is coming in the next 10 days going to hit the Eastern coast. We have locust attacks happening in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, devastating the fields of farmers with all linked to climate change. The fact of the matter is whether it is cyclone or the locust attack, there is enough scientific evidence now to say clearly that this is linked to climate change. You are seeing intensification of cyclones, increased frequency of cyclone because of the change temperature between the land and the ocean. You're seeing rapidification of cyclones becoming more and more unpredictable and so difficult and huge force with which they hit. The locust attacks that we are seeing in Rajasthan, Gujarat, the North, the Horn of Africa, countries are being ravaged both by war, by strife, by poverty, and now by locust attacks. And that's happening also because of unseasonal rainfall that we saw in the Arabian Peninsula and the, the creation of these breeding grounds for, uh, for uh, locusts. And what we need to remember, and I think that's really where we are all in it together, we need to remember three things. And I, and I, and I very much heard this in everybody's conversation. And I'm reiterating it, three things. One, we have lost too much time. We are today actually suffering the consequences of the years of procrastination and the time that we have lost. We have built a inequitable society, which means that the impact of climate change or the impact of the coronavirus is worse whether it is the blacks in America or the, or the poor in India. The fact is they are hit doubly. They are hit when the virus hits because they are more prone to infection and they are hit because of the loss of livelihoods. So we have built a highly inequitable society. We have also built cities where people don't have the, 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 the ability to wash their hands, to have good sanitation, to be able to have the immunity they need so that this contagion doesn't get to them. And that's part of the crisis of, of environment. It's the crisis of the way we have done development till now. That's the first big lesson that we need to take back, that we have lost so much time. And we have lost it because of the arrogance that we have always believed that we can conquer nature. And that then brings me to the second point. The second point very clearly is that we have today a dystopian relationship with nature. There should be no doubt about this. The fact is the virus is mutating because of the fact that we have gone into the habitats of animals. And so the virus mutates from the wild to the humans. But it's also mutating because of the industrial food system that we have built, which makes animal populations more vulnerable. We feed them antibiotics. We create a machine to build our food, to grow our food, to manufacture our food. 
And that is making us much more vulnerable. And the third and the final point I want to make, uh, uh, Sadhviji, is what climate change and the virus tell us with, and there should be no doubt about this. We live in an interdependent, interconnected world. The locust, the virus, air pollution, or climate change, they know no boundaries. And it's important therefore to build global leadership. And I can only say, and I can say this because I am with friends and I hope you don't, I think we could not have chosen the worst, this is the worst time in the world to have a, the need for global leadership because we just don't have it today. And so we need to really talk about it, build it. We have to have global leadership because we cannot have weak global institutions. We cannot have selfish global leaders in a time when the world has to come together. And that's where faith and science must work. Thank you very much.